during the warmer months, I like to ferment my chicken feet. It's a little bit too difficult for me to be able to do in the winter, though I do hope to set up some sort of system that enables me to do it during the winter also. And that's just because, you know, it gets cold, it freezes, it stuff doesn't, doesn't actually ferment. I'm just getting ready to restart it, and they are my main motivation. They go through so much food, and so much wasted food. One of the bonuses that I had um, come out of cleaning up the area on the other side of our garage there, I found my four-way splitter that I had in Washington. I also found a timer, but anyways, my main motivation is these guys, they just eat so much food. And like, they just ate not an hour ago and they're already just wanting more food. And we're already overfeeding them based on guidelines. So, you know, fermenting the feed is fantastic. I've only ever done it for chickens and ducks, but fermenting the feed is fantastic for anything that is not a ruminant animal. Ruminants ferment their own feed inside of the rumen. So I'm sure it's helpful. Uh, we don't have any ruminants. <laughs> but I'm sure it's helpful to even and ruminant animals, but especially for anything that has a single stomach, fermenting their feed helps to break down the food. It helps to unlock a lot of nutrients, gets rid of a lot of the toxic stuff that's in it so that they can fully digest the food. I have noticed with fermenting the chicken feed, they have uh, significantly less excess grain, if really any, in their, in their poo, which means that they're digesting it. Whereas like right now, you can look through here. I mean, if we hadn't just covered it with leaves and hay, you can look through here and you can see tons and tons and tons of whole intact grains that are in their excrement. It basically, it helps with the feed to meat ratio and makes it so that they can fully digest all of the food that you're feeding them instead of only like, I don't know, 50% of it, it, they can utilize all of it, which means that they are satisfied sooner, they fill up their stomachs with good nutritious food, and they don't need to eat as anywhere near as much. So we're gonna get started on that today. Robert has already moved the feed barrel over here because it was empty, we had to get more feed yesterday. So when I'm feeling a little bit more up to it, I'm gonna clear this whole area out right here, but that's gonna be more work than I'm capable of doing today. So we're just gonna set up the buckets, but we're gonna go find all the buckets. <laughs> I need 12, just for the pigs, because they eat twice a day, and I have two different closures for them. It's a three-day ferment, so in order to feed them twice a day, I need six buckets for each enclosure. That gives me 12. And then if I wanna add in the chickens and the ducks, which I do, but I'm not sure if I have enough buckets for them, that'll take an extra six of them, because they only eat once a day. I know that one's got holes in it. I see buckets up there. Oh, these are probably so gross. I had burn before, that's what I was fermenting chicken feed in. And knowing myself, I really don't think I washed them out. Okay, that one's all dried up. That might be a good sign. That's full of water, gross. That one's full of something. I don't think I want to put that in my garden. Definitely washing some buckets out. That's black. I don't know what that was. Gross as it was. I don't think I'm gonna put wet buckets together. This one feels empty. Huh, not too bad. I'm seven. That makes 12. That makes 12, but we are short three lids. So, lid hunting time. I do have a bunch of those square buckets, but they don't have handles. And this stuff is pretty heavy once it's full, so I don't want to do that. I might be able to find six more buckets, but the problem is I don't know if I'm going to find six more lids because I have procured many buckets from local businesses, but most of them don't come with lids. <laughs> so I might just have to go buy some lids. For now, we're just going to go hunting because I have no idea where to find two more lids. Oh, hey. Now look at one. I wonder how long it's gonna take for me to figure that out. Where can they be? 
just need two more. We're gonna be using these here in a few minutes for something else. Dang it, I really hoped I'd find some lids out here. Into hiding. Number 12. The first thing I gotta do with this is scrub all these out. Um, I'm just using regular soap and water, hose water, nothing antibacterial, because we're trying to culture bacteria. We just want to make sure to give it the best chance of a head start and make sure that there is, oh, I need to turn those on, um, to make sure that there's no funky bacteria that we're trying to culture, you know? Yeah, see, most of these are perfectly fine, but some of them are not. Got them all clean. It took a lot more effort than I thought it would. I guess when you're sick, you don't have the energy that you do normally. My arms are tired. So, with these buckets, I need to mark them so I can differentiate AM and PM, you know, boars and mamas, and stuff like that. Like, I just need to be able to differentiate them, especially the days. The days are the most important because once we get the cycle rolling with these, I need to know which day I'm currently on. And I just differentiate that one, two, three. So I know, and then, you know, just rotating the buckets as I go, I, we know which days to feed, which ones to feed them on which days. So first up, we'll do the mamas. I give them three scoops in the morning, three scoops in the evening. It's a lot of feed. It feels like so much feed. Where's the feed? There's no feed in there. I thought Javi unloaded the feed this morning. I guess he did not. I guess he just moved the barrel. Okay, so now that we got the feed in the barrel, we can fill up our bucket. Um, these six are gonna be for the females. They get three scoops. These six are gonna be for the male. He gets one scoop. Uh, that'll obviously change with time. When the little ones grow, we'll have to add another one when we're growing them out. You know, it's a growing, changing system. But for now, this is what we need. So now, I'm gonna move them over to their place over here in the shade um, before I fill them up, just because it's easier. These lids are still wet, so I'm gonna have to write on them later. So the idea of this is probably can't hear me. The way that I'm filling, this lighting is atrocious. The way that I'm filling up these buckets is I'm trying to guesstimate um, about double of the volume that's in there of the feed because the grain that's in there is gonna soak it all up and then you wanna make sure that after it's soaked it all up and it has expanded, that there's still a, a bit of a layer of liquid on top to hold it underneath the brine. And that kind of just helps to, prefer, to limit the amount of mold that's gonna grow in here. And you wanna make sure to stir it up so that the water can access everything that is under there. So there's no like air gaps in there, which can possibly aid in um, you know, just the ferment going kind of wonky. I gotta get a better stirring stick. This thing's gonna break any day now, see? And then once you get it all broken up, it's pretty easy to stir, so you can kind of, you can tell. There's a lot of people who just like to soak their grains for like 24 hours. And the problem with that is that it has expanded and meaning that 
the grain in there has expanded, which means that it will fill up their stomachs faster. However, they won't get the nutrition that they need because they eat, they basically, they eat the amount that in general, you know, pigs might be a bit of an exception because they're, they're pigs. But in general, they'll just eat what they need to get the nutrients that they need. But if you fill up their stomach before they can get the nutrition that they need, they're gonna be now mal malnourished. It's fine to do like over the next couple days while these are fermenting, um, but it's definitely not, it's not a long-term game plan if you want healthy animals. So I'm still gonna feed them the dry feed this evening, but starting in the morning, they'll get the soaked feed you know, it'll just be soaked feed for a couple of days, which will be just fine. And then after three days, we'll get the full rotation going. And then that way, every time we feed them, they'll have the good fermented feed. And then as time goes on, the garden starts to expand. We'll probably add in some um, some vegetables and ferment those and you know, we'll just do all kinds of stuff with them But for now, this is what we're starting with. This is what we're working with including weird angles and lighting So you can see I haven't stirred this yet and it's still continuing to let um, To get the oxygen or to get the liquid inside there and replace the oxygen so stirring it kind of just helps that process and Make sure that it actually happens. So I had planned to make something else as a part of this video, but I'm, I'm getting pretty exhausted trying to do all this work uh, while I'm still sick. So I think that the rest of this video is just gonna be following along over the next couple of days, getting this thing hydrated and kind of giving you an idea of the flow of fermenting feed, especially for pigs who need to eat twice a day and they eat a lot of food. So the other thing that I planned on doing, look forward to it in the next video. I'm gonna keep you in suspense. It is morning and I'm ready to go and feed the pigs and show you what it looks like after 18 hours or so of fermentation. I sound way better, way worse than I feel. I actually feel quote, totally fine. I don't know why my voice is like this. It looks like all the buckets are intact. Nothing broken in the middle of the night. If you have the ability to close these lids, you totally can. Um, but I don't have the ability to open them. <laughs> I don't have the strength to open them, so I don't seal them. So this is 24 hours, or 18 hours, sir. See, nice and bubbly. It's a good idea to stir it before you go to feed them because otherwise it's really hard to get it out of the bucket. to show you how much it expanded. It's right here. It's only this much below the water. So it expands quite a bit. It'll probably continue to expand over the day. You need to distract them. This will work. I just needed something that I can scoop in a bowl to get them away from the fence. The gate. forgot about one step in the process having an extra bucket so I can strain off the excess liquid because you can save that to inoculate the next fermentation and it's also just annoying for them to have a big pile of liquid in one of their bowls that's all there is to it that's not all there is to it we need to make the next batch. You just gotta put, do exactly the same thing, but you gotta rotate them. And since we weren't able to write on these last night, we're gonna write on them now. Basically, I just marked that side bore, this side mama. I wrote AM on three of them, PM on three of them. And then I numbered those one through three. So like this one is mama AM3, mama AM2, 
mom at AM1. So I know, um, I'll show you the rotation over the next couple of days. It'll make more sense if it doesn't now. Oh, and this bucket broke. <laughs> That's why I didn't grab it. I gotta find a new bucket. However you can figure for your own setup to rotate them, do that. Whatever makes sense to you and works with your situation, do that. all there is to it. I was going to say something. When you are filling these up after you have dumped them out, make sure that you're spraying down the side walls. That'll help to eliminate the mold because if you leave a bunch of crud on the sides, it's going to develop mold. 24 hours. This is what it looks like. This time around, thankfully, I did remember to dump off the excess liquid. Now it's the boar's turn. it for day one. See you in the morning. We are on day number two of our fermented pig feed. So let's go check on the feed and, you know, feed the pigs. After one and a half days, so it looks about the same. It's bubbling, so you can tell it's fermenting inside there. That's about it. You can see how much it's expanded, it was about half of that. Ooh, it's got some good action going on. It's almost feeding time, not quite, um, but today, hubby's off today and usually on, um, on the days that he's off, he usually takes care of the evening chores. So I'm just gonna pop out here real quick and so you can see how it is after two days of fermentation. We're getting ready for a really big um, thunderstorm. We're told that there could be um, softball size hail as well as a tornado threat. So I really hope everything's fine overnight. We'll see. But I just want to show you. Here's what the mamas look like. You can see it's starting to get really foamy, very active. I just didn't want to miss anything. Um, with our three days of fermenting the pig feed. So Robert will probably come out here in maybe a couple hours maybe sooner if it starts to look like the threat is really starting to build it's definitely very noticeably dark it's definitely very ominous i think the storm is supposed to be coming from 
that direction. I was trying to make sense of it on the radar and that kind of seems to be where the weather pattern is moving in from. Um, but it's definitely looking dark. <laughs> it's looking like it might turn into something. I'm gonna go inside, make sure that our bug out bag is ready in case we have to jet into the shelter. Hopefully that tarp that we just laid down <laughs> yesterday with my son is not gonna get blown away and blown to bits. But yeah. Oh, your camera is soaked. Yep. It was like fine. I came inside to do something and then it was just like instant just bang. So it is the last day of our three day cycle. And I'm anticipating it's not gonna look as fermenty as it would on a normal day because it has been very cold since about yesterday afternoon. Even in the greenhouse, it is like 48 degrees and it needs to be about 55 for the bacteria to really start to wake up and do things. So it sucks, but oh well. And last night, Hubby and I had a little bit of a communication error and um, he just fed them dry feed last night. He was trying to avoid the storm, get everybody fed, get everybody locked up. And um, I didn't get a chance to tell him I needed to come out here with him and show him how to do the fermented system. So um, after that, I was able to show him. So moving forward, he'll kind of have an understanding of the rotation and how I'm doing stuff out here. Based on this bucket down here, it looks like we got probably almost two inches of rain yesterday <laughs> in one day, because that bucket was empty and it is not anymore. At any rate, this is the, um, the one that we're supposed to feed. See, it's just, normally it would get all foamy and frothy. You can kind of start to see some of the yeast starting to form. You can see the bubbles in there. Like, it is fermenting, but it's not fermented, if that makes sense. So let's feed these guys. about all there is to it. So that entire clip was 11 minutes, so that was probably less than, including the time of feeding them, that was probably like eight minutes. Not bad to save 30% on your feed bill, hey? So we are at the very last day of feeding, day number three, and Robert's feeding them again this evening. Um, we did go over the rotation and everything, so he knows exactly what to do, but I wanted to make sure to show you guys what it looks like. Nothing. <laughs> You can see, it's, again, it's still got a little bit of yeast that's starting to form. But there is a direct correlation between temperature and how long this will take to ferment. So during the warmer summer months, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're keeping it in the shade. You're gonna wanna make sure that it doesn't get too terribly hot. If it gets really, really hot, you can kill the bacteria in there. But that's not like, I mean, we're talking like 115 degrees, so. And for us, the issue was that it has been too cold. It's not been like terribly cold, it's not been freezing, but it's been cold enough that this bacteria is having a, is on the struggle bus to uh, proliferate. What on earth is she doing? <laughs> I'm guessing that she's trying to assert her dominance, but she's not the dominant one, so I'm not sure what's going on over there. But anyways, as we are turning this over, probably by the next round I'd say in like three days these will all be very well fermented by the third day because we are taking the bacteria that's in the liquid of the one say that we're going to do today and we're adding it so it's like a starter culture and it will inoculate the batch and it will jump start it so it will definitely get there if this starts to get mold and get kind of funky I'll dump off the liquid and start over again because once the mold is in there it's going to continue to proliferate if it's just a tiny little bit I'm not going to be concerned about it but if it starts to kind of take over the bucket, 
dump it, wash it out, start again. So as you can see, it just takes a little bit of planning. It takes a few extra minutes a day. It's really not a big deal. And you save a tremendous amount on your feed bill once they start to get used to the new style of feeding. So as the, as the next you know week or so goes on, we'll be able to feed them less and they'll be just as satiated as they were with the, with the dry feed in a much more quantity. If you guys are interested in how to do this for chickens, basically the same process, but a little bit more tailored to the chicken owners. Be sure to check out this video right here that'll give you all the information that you need to know in order to be successful at saving yourself about 30% on your feed bill. Peace out, sauerkraut.